we have overgrown weeds that we need to take care of as well as a gopher issue. Let's start with the weeds. This is my solution to the gopher problem. I've used it before in a different project with artificial turf, and it works great. This is the gazebo that I'll be putting together. Came in three boxes and I had to pick it up at the store. Part C goes into Part B. Using what they call a union bar. Union bar. Two screws here and here. Fix this in editing. All right. Okay, so there we go. And part B slides in. So these two holes align with the holes on the inside on that union bar then you just attach a screw and tighten it up step two the second part of step two requires part E and D to be joined together using that same un union bar that we use for B and C. The same rules apply. Make sure that when you line them up, you know, they're lined up this way so that union bar would easily slide in. So you can slide it in on that side with part E and 
Same thing with part D. The second part of step two requires part E and D to be joined together using that same un union bar that we use for B and C. The same rules apply. Make sure that when you line them up, you know, they're lined up this way so that union bar would easily slide in. So you can slide it in on that side with part E and same thing with part D. Still part two. Here's the seam where those two pieces meet. When you're putting this together, make sure that the interior uh, union bar, you insert it at this, at this entry point here. For one, it's the only place it'll go in correctly. If you try inserting it at the other end, it won't slide all the way in as it needs to for the screws to line up with the holes. The best way to know where it goes is the top part here, it's got a dip compared to the bottom part. Step three, working on C. So you're going to look for C1 and C2 and attach those to the side that you just screwed in that was letter C. I still need to put in all the screws but this is what it looks like. C, C1, C2. And we're going to do the same thing on the opposite end with B1 and B2 on B. Now just tighten all the screws and repeat the process for the other com completed beam C and B and then I'll show you E and D in a minute. Here are the completed smaller pieces which are B and C. And here are the larger pieces. which are E and D. I will say this, I had an issue uh, having some of these screws line up. I believe it was this one and this one. They were offline because the bracket inside was misaligned, which they call the union bar was misaligned. So I had to loosen up these bottom two screws which gave me a little play on the inside to slide the union bar within these actual pieces which helped line up the screws and then once everything was lined up I was able to just tighten them in place All right, moving on to step four step four requires You attach one of the corner posts to the beams two screws here it slides under this one piece D2 and you can do the same for all posts and all for the uh, beams that you put together The 
This is the second post. Line up the holes and you're good to go. I installed the two corner posts to the beam on top, then brought it out here to where it's going to end up. For the next piece, I attached one corner post to one of the shorter pieces. I plan on carrying it out here and attaching it to there so then it'll give me the two walls then I'll plan plan on doing the same with this side and at the end it'll just leave me with one beam to put up so there we go three corner posts are up just need one more corner post and two more beams on top. We've got four posts up now. Three of the beams on top. Here we go. One, two, three. Just need to bring out the fourth. Here we are now with the four posts up. Gonna move on to the next step. So I'm adding these corner solidifying bars. When you're doing this, just make sure that they screw on from the inside. If as opposed to the outside, this goes in here. The holes also go on the inside. Put on your screws, tighten it up, and you're good to go. All four of these eight, I guess, corner bars are up. Which makes this whole frame a lot sturdier. Moving on to step six. Two screws, one there, one there on top. Piece slides right in. And then two screws, one through there, and one through there. You do that four times, one for each corner. Once you have all your hooks in, you don't want to loosen this screw to put in the cap so that these hooks don't fall out and then just tighten it back in place and it closes the gap up here. The next step is silicone sealant. up on top where your seams are just four spots to keep the water from coming in
all I'm doing here is filling in the gaps so that rain doesn't get in Trying to do it just on top because the silicone provided is dark and I don't want it to be seen from the bottom. So I did that on all four scenes. Okay, time to start building the roof. Step eight, setting up the roof frame. Let's round up the parts. See what it looks like. This next step for the framing for the roof is going to require a lot of space. You've got two bolts on each one of these uh, corner posts. I don't know what else to call them. So then you've got one more here, one more here. This part seems a little tricky. So you've got this part here, which is Q. Goes, it's screwed in to this but you also got to include P behind this little end cap so then you line them up there bring Q up on top put the end cap in there and then screw all three pieces together and you do that for all four corners it's put together everything's tight I did notice that these four pieces, this one, kind of bow out from the center. I'm going to assume it's a design thing. Uh, now that it's all put together, time to slap it on the roof, on the actual other frame. to go from this to this wish me luck the top is up it's bolted down getting that up there it's gonna require two people I was able to do it on my own it wasn't easy it's easier with two people step nine Attaching the last four roof bars before moving on to the roof. The last four support beams take a little finagling. You got one screw there. Two screws here. I recommend you don't tighten everything up until you've got all the screws in. I still need to get those two pieces screwed in on top. So I need three actually. The far end one's not attached either yet. And it's best if you leave everything loose just in case you gotta move it around. If you tighten everything up too soon, you won't have any wiggle room to move these things around. Okay. So I made the mistake. I'm trying to attach these underneath then realize they go on top screwed from underneath let's try this again take two all right second time's a charm everything is still loose however everything's in the right spot again these last four beams go on top not under where I had them before.
moving on to step 10 now that I've painted it black let's put it in place okay, that top piece is pretty simple it's just two screws step 11 some top shingles but before we get there need to paint them black Given that I'm painting the top of the shingle black, I decided to also paint the exposed portions of the frame for the shingles black. Meaning this, this part, is pretty much just the corner frames where the shingles slide into. So I'm painting the tops black so that when all the shingles are on, it's all the same color on the outside and on the inside it'll remain the same brown. So here are the two colors. That is the original color. That is the new color, black. Step 11 requires that we put these plastic pieces on the edge of the shingles. They go on the top edge. It took me a few attempts to figure out exactly how to place them in their position. The bags that the clips come in are not labeled. But if you look close at the actual clips, you will notice that each clip is labeled individually. working on step number 12 which is putting all of these panels into their position when installing these panels I found it was best if I loosened up the top end cap otherwise these things do not slide in so I just loosened up the two screws to make the top easier to finagle. You're gonna to wanna to slide one panel in the center there and it'll just slide right up. And this is the part where you need this to be loose so that this piece slides right in there. Once you slide those pieces in, the instructions say just put in the center screw, even though three screws per panel, one here, one here, and one on the other end. However, you're going to want to leave off the last two, the corner ones, because you still need to set in these panels and the panels on the opposite end. Once I've got this in, I need to come back and paint this top side and this other side here so that it matches the black paint on top here it is from the bottom I've got three sides on so one two three I'm gonna start working on the fourth which is four panels two corner pieces and then two center pieces one on either side That's one piece here. Here's the seam. This is the second piece. Here's the seam. And the third corner is over there. They all overlay over each other. And then this long piece kind of just pops in and 
holds everything in place. So you just gotta slide it in all the way to the edge and then just pop it all in. So these are the corners. Line up all three holes, one, two, with the hole in the back. This is my last one, so it's giving me a little bit of trouble. But you line them all up, pop in the cap, put in the screw, you're good to go. Everything is still loose, so once I put this on, I need to go around the entire structure on top and tighten everything. Took a little elbow grease. There it is. Just a little pressure on the left side to line up the hole, but we're in. On to step 13. For step 13, if you're looking at the images, this is the U1 part. This slides in, into the hole. You screw that in. Which is this here. Then on the opposite end, this is the U3. That will end up going in here. Same deal. Bolt that in, bam, bam, and then the other part attaches to here. Here's what it looks like. It should be angled down. Otherwise, the part where the uh, bolt goes into will be at the wrong angle for this piece to actually slip in and bolt on. The other end. Again, I'm trying to keep everything loose, and once everything's in place, I'll tighten everything up. It helps keeping everything loose so stuff just slips into where it's supposed to. Getting to the end of this step, just one more piece here. and tighten everything up. There we go. And I'm going to start by screwing all tight all the brackets first so there's one two three screwing all of those in first and then coming back and tightening all the other bolts that hold the cross beams step 14 more roof panels to be attached the panels are starting to slide in. That's three panels there. Fortunately, they don't slide off. There's nothing hold them, holding them in place yet. But you're supposed to go counterclockwise, starting in that corner and working your way around. Make sure you read the instructions in order and follow the steps. I've already attached four panels. I'm gonna to need to remove a couple because step 15 says to start screwing them in one at a time before you put in the next one. However, the previous page that give you the overall assembly without letting you know that you need to screw them in one at a time. Here we are. 
putting these screws in after I had already put down those roofing panels <clears throat> just because the instructions weren't clear uh, it's a little difficult to do after the fact try to get it done right the first time however it's not impossible it just takes a little more time I ran into a bit of an issue trying to fasten the left panels where the screws on the roof panel weren't aligning with the brace here so what I'm doing is I'm loosening up these five screws to give that bottom brace some play once I get the roofing panels back on nice and tight I can also tighten that one brace underneath The anchors went in today. Got four of them, they're fairly big. I was, well, I wasn't unable, I just forgot um, to get video or pictures of them before they went in. Along with the anchors, this tree went in today. It's a privacy tree. In time, it's gonna grow out to give us privacy under the gazebo. The next step is to continue with the gopher mesh. Weed barrier. This, this mesh is meant to Again, we've got a huge gopher problem. It's meant to keep the gophers from coming up, eating through whatever we put down, and coming up on top and making a mess of everything. So that's gonna go similar to that corner there, along the entirety of the floor that we want protected. Which would be most of this side, which is about three-fourths of the right side and the entirety of the other side of the walkway. Now that the tree is in, for the pergola, you can tie it into the trip irrigation system. It's just gonna dig a trench. Down to the edge and I also have a couple planters that I need to tie into the same drip irrigation system. I'm going to use a T. Just a T. To tie into the system, I'm just one of these little elbows to cut off the hose at the other end. I've got one hose inside of the other hose inside of a PVC pipe to protect the black hose because it's really thin to protect it from any of the staples coming through when I staple down the remainder of the uh, gopher mesh don't want any holes through it 
just by accident. Don't have to dig everything up again. Want to make sure that the new tree, gazebo tree here, gets uh, water where it needs. This two foot drip irrigation stake is going to do just the trick. We've got the irrigation running underground drip irrigation through the pots now that they're in place filling them up with dirt a little bit of potting mix I'm gonna cut the hoses to size and set the um, the drips on the end of them and we're good to go So the rocks are here, already started moving them like I mentioned before, the wheelbarrow, a couple shovels, I think I underestimated the amount of rocks I'm going to need, and I only purchased three bags, almost done with one, once I'm done with that one I need to move over a couple more and see how many more I need to get after that. Again, all of this is going with the pergola. It's part of the whole design. It's three bags. Quarter inch gravel. It's two of the bags. There was over here. Got a little bit of it back behind here. Uh, looking around, I'm estimating I'm gonna need another six bags, give or take. So I need to go order those. I'll let you know how it turns out. <laughs> 